example, I want to just go over how to find the critical values for a confidence interval for variance or standard deviation. Okay, so let's take a look at the values here. I want to find my upper critical value and my lower critical value for the given level of confidence. Okay, so let's take a look at, at this one here. Okay, so my level of confidence is given to be 99% or 0.99 with a sample size of 15. Okay, so I want to find chi-square sub r, my upper critical value, and chi-square sub L, my lower critical value, for n is equal to 15, and 99% um, level of confidence. Okay, so what I want to do, and I strongly suggest you do this for every problem that you do by hand, is that you need to sketch the distribution this is not a symmetric distribution. It is skewed right, so I'm not going to be drawing a bell curve. Okay, so I'm going to be drawing a skewed right distribution and shading two areas here. And I need to recognize the fact that I want 0.99 amount of area between them. Okay, or you could have shaded the 0.99 and left the tails blank. That's fine. Okay, but what you want to make sure you're doing is you're finding the correct um, way to read this so you can use the table. Okay, so if I partition the um, curve like this, I know that together I have 1% um, of the area or 0.01. So in one tail, in this right tail, I'm going to have 0.005 amount of area. And in this lower tail, I'm going to have 0.005 amount of area. Okay. Now, because um, this distribution is not symmetric, I can't just find one of these and take the opposite. Okay, they're going to both be positive, okay, because the chi-square distribution only takes on non-negative values. It's the sampling distribution for the standard deviation, okay, and standard deviation can never be negative. Okay, so I'm going to have to go to the table twice, okay, and the table reads differently than the standard normal table. Okay, it reads from your critical value to positive infinity. So to get this upper critical value, I'm okay because I have the area shaded correctly from this critical value to positive infinity. Okay, so that's the direction my table reads. So if n is equal to 15, my degrees of freedom will be equal to 14. So I want to go to the table and read down to 14 degrees of freedom over to an area of 0 0.005 to the right of that critical value. Okay, so you'll see the areas to the right of the critical value are along the top and the degrees of freedom are in the first column. So I need to read across for 14 degrees of freedom and down um, from 0 0.005. Okay, so I get a critical value of 31.319. Okay, now to get a lower critical value, I again have to go to the chi-square table. Okay, and I know I've got 0 0.005 area in this upper tail. Okay, but it's not going to be negative 31.319. I have to go to the body of the table and read this way. Okay, so I know it's going to be this amount, 0.99, plus the 0 0.005 more. So going this way, I have 0.995. Okay, and that should make sense. These are complementary areas. Okay, so this lower critical value Again, I'm going to go to the um, row that corresponds to a degree of free, degrees of freedom of 14. But now I just need to read across for an area to the right of that value of 0.995. Okay, so I get point, or sorry, 4.075. Okay, so you're going to be needing to do this for um, 
The confidence interval formula, if you do this by hand rather than getting this in StatCrunch. Now, the calculator does not have a built-in confidence interval for standard deviation or variance. Okay, so your choices are to do this by hand or to get this in StatCrunch. Okay, StatCrunch is really easy to use, so if you like using technology, um, I strongly suggest that you um, look at StatCrunch. Okay, so just real quick, let's take a look at one more. Okay, so let's say that um, we're given a level of confidence of 98% with a sample size equal to 26. Again, I want to find the two critical values for this confidence interval, whatever um, I may be doing this for. Okay, so if I have 0.98 area in between, I'd have 0.02 area total, and then one tail, I'd have 0.01. Okay, so for this upper critical value, remember the table reads from your critical value to positive infinity, and my degrees of freedom will be equal to 25. Um, it's easy to find the upper critical value, okay, because my table reads in this direction. So I want to go down to 25 degrees of freedom and over to 0.01 area in one tail, in the upper tail. I'll try to fit that on. Okay, so see 0.01, that's to the right of that critical value. 25 degrees of freedom. I'm going to see where those two intersect. Okay, so that's 44.314. And for this lower critical value, I'm reading this direction also. It's going to be 0.98 plus the 0.01. So I need to use the table that has a column corresponding to 0.99 for 25 degrees of freedom. Okay, so 25 degrees of freedom, 0.99 amount of area to the right of it. I get 11.524. Okay, so um, I don't have enough information to fully construct a confidence interval because I'm not given the sample standard deviation. But let's go ahead and review that formula really quick. The formula for a confidence interval for the variance is um, your sample size minus 1 times the sample variance over the upper critical value. And the numerator is the same for the other endpoint, but the denominator has the lower critical value. Okay, so you'll be given the sample size, or you'll have the raw data, and you'll have to find the sample variance, or you'll be given the sample variance in the problem. And then to do this by hand, you would need to go to the table and get these two critical values. So, for example, if I were constructing a confidence interval with this information, I'd put the 44.314 here and the 11.524 here. Okay? So I hope that helps you get started on um, finding the critical values for uh, confidence interval for the variance.